Welcome to Real Estate Coaching Radio, starring award-winning real estate coaches and number one international best-selling authors, Tim and Julie Harris. This is the number one daily radio show for realtors looking for a no BS, authentic, real-time coaching experience. What's really working in today's market, how to generate more leads, make more money, and have more time for what you love in your life. And now your hosts, Tim and Julie Harris. Three, two, one, and we're back. It is June the 8th, and today we're talking about something that all of you need to be paying very close attention to, which is centers of influence and past clients. And this was inspired by a lot of feedback from our coaches. Uh, We have, uh, I don't know, hundreds of agents joining our coaching program every month, and we're getting feedback from our uh, different coaches about some of the things that they want us to be focusing on in the podcast. Uh, It's interesting that in mass, oftentimes people have the same challenges, right? People often... Often agents will sometimes in just uh, it's strange, but we'll have a big wave of people that join the coaching program that, for example, have never learned about how to properly work their centers of influence and past clients, and that seems to be the case now. And this is especially true for those of you who've been in the business a long time, who've essentially been addicted to buying your business and have been addicted to digitally marketing to your centers of influence and past clients. Um, and not actually doing the real work of real estate, which is picking up the phone and having real conversations with them. So we're going to be focusing on that, um, some ideas for you and some specific drilled down no BS fluffery plans with regards to you working your centers of influence and past clients. Julie? Yes. So I would agree with you. It's the people that are addicted to digitally marketing and doing some of the more passive things, kind of delegating it over to technology. Mm -hmm. But this is also something that I've noticed amongst our crowd of actual, you know, serious prospectors that are used to more expireds. And so a couple of shifts are going on. We're having them realize that this is the rise of the for sale by owner. There are a lot of a lot more for sale by owners right now. And to be really closely watching those, especially the ones that make it through two weekends without actually selling, those are the ones that historically our clients are able to go after, even add their commission to it. The seller net's the same. They get it sold right away. And oftentimes, they also get a buyer side transaction out of it. And we did talk so. about uh, FISBOs extensively yes. a couple of weeks ago. So go back and listen to the podcast and listen to the specific information on um, attracting FISBOs. I think it was one or two podcasts yes. on that topic. and it was definitely last week. And so this, what we're talking about today, is in addition to that, not instead of. So let's, do, let's just, for the sake of new listeners, because mm-hmm. we can never forget sure. that we pick You're up right. listeners every day. I mean, we have podcast listeners in 61 different countries. I noticed that we're picking up a lot of listeners in where India, Colombia, um, all over the Middle East. Well, mostly where there's military bases, because a lot of our listeners are um, in the military. But here's the thing. Thing. If you have to list a house and maybe make, make it more of a challenge, and I say this to you guys in this podcast on a regular basis because it does such a brilliant job of cutting through the BS. You have to list three houses. Today's the eighth and you have to list three houses by the end of the month. You don't have three listing leads. You don't have you know three contracts already signed and you're just ready to make them active. You have no listing leads and you have to create three listings, not just listing leads by the end of the month. How are you going to do it? What are you not going to do? What are you not going to do? And, and write all these things down. You can do it mentally if you're on a treadmill or if you're driving, you know, obviously. But mentally, what are you not going to do? What are you going to stop doing if it's that urgent that you have to list? You must list three houses or we're going to send you to Mars on a one-way trip on Elon Musk's uh, first uh, space flight with no guarantees of getting there, let alone ever coming back. You you're, guys you're got, the test person. You are. Exactly. So you get it? How are you going to, what are you going to stop doing? And here's the interesting thing, not by asking the question, the normal way to have asked that question would be, what will you do to generate the business? Mm -hmm. And that just basically is usually a big, you know, a sea of BS as far as what people will say. So if you, if you really want to get to the heart of how are you going to generate it, ask yourself what you'll stop doing. And what your mind will immediately do is your mind is immediately going to start telling you all the things that you're doing that are, are that are absolutely positively not going to get you to the three listings by the end of the month or have a low probability of not getting you to three new listings at the end of the month. And then the next question I would ask you after, if we were doing this exercise live after you'd written down the things you'd stop doing, and I'd ask you then, how much time do you spend doing those things now? Uh, as far as pro, as far as lead generation, and I know what your answers would be, 100% of the time. So in other words, you're spending 100% of your lead generation time doing things that you are positive will not generate you three listings by the end of the month. Isn't that interesting? Now, I'll reframe the question. What would you do if you absolutely positively had to take three listings by the end of the month and you're not going to do the things you just wrote down? 
And you know what you're going to come up with? The things that Tim and Julie Harris teach. Hmm. Oddly <laughs> enough. So here's, here's the question you have to ask yourself. Why are you bothering doing the other crap? Why do you bother doing the fluffy stuff? Because it's comfortable. It's comfortable. It's easy. <laughs> it doesn't It doesn't result any rejection. Well, you're not going to have any conflict. No, I'm not, no, exactly. No. I could spend all my time on Facebook and you fake work all day. You don't have to talk to anybody. You'll never have any conflict. No, I could just sp- send messages and I can work on my funnels. <laughs> Right? It's not real work, guys. Real work is learning how to, uh, you know, essentially pick up the phone or have in-person conversations and having the skill set to know what to say and how to say it. That's real work. That's what you're supposed to do. And you already know it's the truth. So why do you even spend any time doing that other crap? Why? Well, here's the shocking thing. These are the the ones that are really addicted to that. And I know it's not all of our listeners because no. a lot of them have been very But we do, unfortunately, have to. When is the last time, aside from a new agent, when yeah. is the last time we had anybody come to us where we didn't have to deprogram them away from it? The crap hole of bad ideas that are out there. The crap hole of bad ideas. Yes, that's pretty common. It's all the time. It's true. And yet, these are the same agents that that will be all self-righteous when they drive past one of their past clients and has somebody else's sign in the yard. They must have overpriced or listed it for free. Oh, they get so pissed about that. The agent must have somehow done something wrong to get the listing. Nope, you didn't call them. But I send them a whole bunch of stuff. Over the last three years, I've been sending them postcards and doing all this other stuff on a regular basis. Yeah. You didn't call them. I'll tell you didn't you, talk to them. I'll tell you guys a true story. And this happened to Julie and I. <laughs> Just to tell you that in some cases we learned the hard way. Yes. So we were living in New Albany Country Club at 7884, whatever the address was. And we lived in this beautiful brick, you know, it was what 6,000 square feet it was just Julie and I and we had some hermit crabs and some cats I don't remember <laughs> two cats but we didn't have dogs. any kids we didn't have any kids yet so we were living in this big ass house in New Albany Country Club Julie had just turned uh, 30 I remember yeah. you know putting a happy birthday sign mm-hmm. to Julie we, should, we had this crazy house anyway so uh, we'd been selling real estate for a while we were very successful and um, we had a lot of our neighbors that we'd sold houses to. A lot of them were relocating. I'm in particular, and I'll tell you guys the company too because they're still there. There was this company called Rolls Royce, not the car manufacturer, but the jet engine manufacturer, and they were located right outside of New Albany. I forget the town, but they used to make and en- engineer and make. I don't know if they made, but I know they did the engineering of these jet engines somewhere mm-hmm. outside of New Albany, Ohio. And we ended up um, ha- we listed a house for uh, we listed a house that was an expired listing. Um, remember the house with the blood on the carpet? Oh, yes. And we ended up selling oh, it. We ended up selling him. <laughs> we ended up selling that. Well, we think it may not have been blood. We, we, we pretend it wasn't blood, but anyway, so we ended up, uh, selling that guy another house, but his neighbor was the CEO of this company. If I'm remembering all this correctly. And his neighbor then saw Julie and I work the heck out of that listing, open houses. We did all kinds of different things. Neighbor only open houses. The things we teach you guys in our coaching program. The whole point of the thing of uh, what we teach you in the coaching program is a to get the listing sold, but b to get their sellers to want to call you to list their house. Yep. Well, so he was paying attention. He called us. You know what? Now that I'm remembering, he actually had one of his executives buy that house. Mm-hmm. That's how he connected. That. That's how we got connected. And then there was a whole army of other executives that were coming in, a new division mm-hmm. or whatever. Mm-hmm. And he, we worked with all these guys. Yeah. Some of them bought in the area where the factory was. Others of them bought in mm-hmm. New Albany, in the country club area. Mm-hmm. So we sold all these guys' houses. And it was a lot. And mm-hmm. a lot of them were buying our listings. And yes. a lot of the listings we got were from centers of influence of past clients, but also from the expireds that we had hunted. Multiple spokes, in other words. Right. And so they all bought our listings. We had, you know, obviously double-ended these. And these were houses. Some of them were 800000 to a $1 million, 600000 Remember, when Julie and I had started out selling real estate, maybe seven years prior to that, our average sale price was like hundred grand. Okay? So we were moving on up. Yeah. <laughs> that was fun. That Those were fun times. Remember the Jeffersons, that song? Yes, but they won't. <laughs> no, no, a couple of them will. <laughs> yeah. All right. So uh, we ended up basically listing all these houses. And then four of the executives, if I remember correctly, who were right within maybe a five-mile radius of where we lived, uh, they were getting relocated within that same company to another division someplace. I don't even remember. I don't remember where. It doesn't matter. So they called us in the, in the late summer, early fall. I don't remember what year, but said, we're going to be putting these houses for sale. We want to put them for sale in the spring. Um, you know, obviously we want to list them with you. We'll see you in the spring. Okay. That was it. So I talked with all of them. They were all going to list the houses and I just, I was complacent. I didn't go over there, get the contract signed. I just took the business for granted. I'm completely flaying myself for the betterment of all of you. So you never make this mistake. Now this was at least probably if we'd only gotten one side, this would have been $5 million to the business at least. Now, we were famous for double ending all of our listings. So realistically, we would have made a quarter million, 350,000 off these listings. Now, 
um, we, the Christmas, you know, Christmas season holiday came and went. And then in the spring, we, now Julie and I did drop off, you know, Christmas presents. We said hello. We mailed Christmas, handwritten Christmas cards. We did the whole thing. We did all the passive crap, people. Are you listening? I mean, we dropped off bottles of wine and nice little yeah, gift baskets. We didn't I mean, do nothing. We, we didn't do we nothing. We did the fun stuff. Right. But remember, the listings are coming in the spring. So Tim and Julie just basically assumed it was their listings. Go us. Then over the holidays, there was an agent. Uh, well, a, a house that sold. wasn't. We didn't have anything to do with the transaction. And a lady and her husband and three little kids moved in. Cute little family. And she had just gotten her real estate license. This was a new licensee. And she ends up having, you know, getting to know all the neighbors. She did a great job networking, Christmas parties, the whole thing. And she ended up listing not one, but all four of those houses. And those were our centers of influence and past clients. Those were houses that we felt entitled to. Those were houses that we thought were in the bag for us. So where did we screw up? We screwed up by not marching our butts over to those people's house the previous uh, late fall, early, you know, when, you know, late summer, early fall, when they said they wanted to sell the houses and getting the contract signed. That's the mistake Actual we made. Actual contact. We took the business for granted. We made the mistake. And when I called one of them, his name was Phil, and I said, Phil, you know, WTF. Of course, they didn't say WTF no. then, so I may have said it. hadn't been invented I yet. may have actually said the words. <laughs> and, and he said, Tim, we, didn't, we thought you were too busy. We, we did, hadn't you, heard from you in a while. We didn't, hadn't heard from you. And, you know, we met her at this Christmas party. And, you know, she's a realtor. You're a realtor. So despite all of this experience, despite all these positive experiences in the past, despite everything we'd done, they basically decided to list with this new agent just because she was there when they were ready to get the contract signed. That is how real estate works. That is how life works. And that was a mistake that we made. And we never made that mistake again. And I... I beg all of you not to make that same mistake when it comes to your centers of influence and past clients. That's right. So thus the topic of today's uh, podcast. Contact your center of influence and past clients before someone else does. Cautionary tale that Tim just shared with you. How many of you guys right now are blushing red because it happened to you too? And how many of you, when it happened to you, are blamed like it wasn't my fault. No, it was the other agent listed at a lower commission. The other agent listed at a higher price. The other agent somehow gamed me, got an advantage. I did not. There's no way I lost this just for the sake of my own fault or my own complacency or laziness. No. I lost those, Julie and I lost those listings because our own complacency or our own laziness. And anything bad or good happens to you, you have to take 100% responsibility for it and never look for something external to blame. Otherwise, you don't learn from it. And your That's behavior right. uh does not change for the better. You have to modify. Okay, so fact number one, as you all know, inventory is at the lowest in recorded history. Listings are gold. Fact number two, it is highly likely your buyers will have to write multiple contracts before they win, if they win. So remember that working with buyers is physical labor and working with listings is mental labor. Right now, listing agents definitely have the better lifestyle, but listings are gold. So fact number three, the market is so tight that would-be buyers are door-knocking neighborhoods themselves looking for somebody to sell to them. Looking for a house to sell to them. Yes. Not, they're well, not, not something. They're not, they're not so, looking for oh, someone. Oh, I said someone. Sorry. We're looking yeah. for a, a house to sell. Yeah. Okay. So what do you do with those three facts? That would be pretty funny. Knock, knock, knock. Do you have someone to sell? <laughs> do you have somebody to sell? I need an assistant. <laughs> yeah. um, okay. So yes, it, it is a fact that, I mean, we even have it here in Puerto Rico. People are door knocking on their own. That's how crazy it is. Yep. And mailing letters. Mm -hmm. And what are you guys doing? What are agents being taught to do? Run Facebook ads. Yeah. Build a funnel. No, get off your butts and go knock on doors. Get off your butts and go meet, meet the, uh, get to know the market. Let all the other agents hide behind their screens. You go out and do the real work. And COVID is basically over, so you can't use that excuse anymore. Okay, so commitment number one, commit to making contact first. I mean, yes, door knocking, but we want to prioritize first. 100% of your past clients and centers of influence in the next 90 days or less than lather, rinse, repeat for the rest of the year. Okay, let's define it. Here we go. Hold on. <clears throat> oh, sorry. <laughs> Contact. We did at the same time. Con proof that we don't edit the show. Contact is a conversation, not... <laughs> now, conversation where you're hearing their voice and they're hearing your voice, <laughs> right? Because I had people argue with me. A conversation, Tim, happens in text. No, no it no, does no. not. Or email. A converse, Well, it kind of does. But the reality of it is a conversation where you're talking to somebody, <laughs> your voice to their voice. Wow. We have to really I define know, things, right? don't we? 
Yeah, these guys. Oh, wait, wait. About real estate. Oh, yeah. About real estate. Not just about real estate, about the real estate that they might have to sell or they might know somebody else that's interested in selling. Just because your center of influence and past client is not in the market to sell, you can always tail in the conversation with, oh, by the way, who do you know who's thinking about, uh, you know, you should say buying, buying or selling in this market that I should be helping? And the reason you should slip the buying in too is just for the fact that some of those buyers might actually be sellers as well. So, you know, you, we give you in our coaching program, we give you the scripts. We tell you what to say. There's no uh, our scripts in our um, centers of influence and past client approach are totally and completely organic. The, of all the scripts that we have, the centers of influence and past client scripts are the least formal because they can't be that formal. Mm -hmm. Some of you are being taught to use scripts where you're calling your mom and you're supposed to be starting out the conversation by saying, this is a business call. <laughs> You know, kidding me? it's preposterous. Yeah. So we do tell you what to say and how to say it. We do make it so the conversation happens very easily uh, for them to listen to you and talk with you, but also for you to say it with a 0.000% chance of any risk or any sense or any risk of uh, rejection. Um, and then what, you know, we give you the script. We tell you what to say, how to say it. It's very smooth, organic, feels totally natural, easy to say. And then we, you end every conversation with, oh, by the way, Julie, who do you know is thinking about buying or selling real estate in this market that I should be helping? And when you ask that question, the first time you call them, after you use our script, then you end it with that question. First time you call them and you have these conversations, they're not necessarily going to have somebody for you. They might. Second time, they might, but probably not. Third time, they're going to start doing it because you're going to have earned the right for them to start actually looking for referrals for you. Because by the way, the nature of what we teach you in our coaching program, you're calling the centers of influence and past clients is to call every single uh, month and give them uh, something of value. And I'll give you a framework of the script, basically. Um, ring, ring. Hello. Hey, Julie, this is Tim Harris. So listen, I've been getting a lot of calls, uh, emails, and you know, any smoke signals from my centers of influence, past clients, people I know, love, and care about. And they're all really interested, in some cases worried about what their home, home's value is in this market. Um, so what I'm calling everyone every single month and I'm letting them know what's going on in their home's value so they don't have to worry. And good news, I have your first report for you available now. Oh, how awesome is that? I was just wondering about that. Boy, you would be the easiest center of influence and but past client ever what? to call. Here's the thing. These calls are not hard. They that just is the think point. They're hard. And they are. I hear it every time on our Facebook Live calls, uh, sessions daily, where they'll they'll have just done that and they'll be like, I can't believe how nice people are. Well, it's because you're calling. It's basically the same you're thing. Being of service. It, well, you're being of service, but you're doing you're over overdoing the being of service in a way because you're calling them and telling them what their house's value is. No, we do not want you doing CMAs for every no. one of the people you're going to call. Just do a quick absorption thing. Go to your MLS and drill down on that particular maybe city or even neighborhood if it's big enough. And then look to see how many houses are currently for sale. Look to see how many houses in that neighborhood sold in the last 30 days. Expand if you need to. And uh, they'll tell them that this, so if there's 30 houses for sale, Mr. Seller, Julie, here, I'll just finish it out. Julie, there's 30 houses mm -hmm. currently for sale in the Oakhurst, in New Albany Country Club. Yep. Okay. And and in last month, there were approximately 10 closings. Mm -hmm. So if no new listings were to come available, there's approximately three months supply of homes for sale right now in New gotcha. Albany Country Club. Now, of course, new homes will come for sale, mm -hmm. but realistically, the uh, average absorption is going to be about 90 days. So in other words, if you were to put your house for sale now, realistically, it would sell within 90 days or less. Make sense? Yeah, absolutely. That's good to know. Yeah, cool. So by the way, do you, are you or do you know of anyone who's thinking about buying or selling that I should be helping in this market? Well, actually, my whole division just found out we're being relocated. And that happens. And that's what happens. And then you know, all of a sudden, you've got all these listing leads that you would have never had if you'd not had that simple three-minute Or three my neighbor's getting divorced. Or there's a FISBO sign next door. Right. Or I don't know what's happening with the vacant house next door. Could you find out for me? Exactly. This is how you do it. This is how you do it in every Every market, not just a market like this. And sometimes people say, oh, you're getting back to basic. No, this is the business. This <laughs> yes. is how you do it. This is now, Tim, I, I drop off forget Nemot seeds in April and pumpkin pies in November. And if you want to do all that tchotchke barrage on them, go for it. You can, but you don't have to. All that's junk that you guys are dropping off at people's houses. Those of you who are following these centers of influence and past clients only uh, plans. I promise you that stuff is not received like you think it is because here's, and I, we've seen this happen. We've experienced this before personally, right? And you guys, you know, we do it for a living, right? So you're dropping, I have had many coaching clients who are dropping off pumpkin pies in November. Which sounds like a nice story, right? Centers of influence, past client, here's a pumpkin pie. 
Well, we had two interesting uh, episodes that were funny that <laughs> emphasized our point. I almost can't wait to tell the second story because it's so much funnier. You know which one I'm going to tell, right? Yeah. All right. So the first one is knock, knock, knock. Hey, happy Thanksgiving. Here's your here's your pumpkin pie. Seller opens the door and there's like three other pumpkin pies sitting <laughs> on a table from all the other agents that dropped off pumpkin pies. Yeah. That instantly, not only, I mean, I don't even know kind how. It's demoralizing. It's really. demoralizing. But it's also, it's kind of funny, but it's probably incredibly embarrassing. Now, that's not the funny story. The funny story was, is we had a, uh, we did not tell them to do this. Let's just emphasize we are not people that are suggesting you buy masses of pies from Costco. I know a lot of people do that every November. But then they left the pie on the uh, doorstep and uh-huh. and they got a call from this was an actual past client who was kind of pissed about it and they're like I think this was from you I found your business card next to it and a pack of raccoons got into this <laughs> pie and smeared it all over my front porch so thanks a lot so that agent had to go over there and clean, and clean their front porch because they, le- they left the pie out so guys look people if you give people a call and it has a lot of value to it you could skip all the other crap. Why are you attracted to the other crap? The only reason you're doing that is because you're afraid of actually having a real conversation with somebody. Why? It makes no sense. Yes. It's and if a- you are somebody that does all that stuff, okay, that's fine. But you must follow up with actual contact. Otherwise, you're wasting your time. Hey, by the way, for those of you guys who are ready to join our premier coaching program, we've made it incredibly easy for you. Um, all you have to do is text the word success S-U-C-C-E-S-S to 47372. Text the word success to 47372. Go ahead and do that now. You can do it while you're listening to us on your mobile. Um, and it works on Android, obviously. It works on iPhone. Just text the word success to 47372. And when you do, we're going to text you back a link that takes you directly to the Premier Coaching page. And I guarantee you guys are all going to want to join as soon as you see how affordable the coaching program is. If you choose to finance the program, it is, uh, if I remember all the terms, basically, it, the payment is around $100 a month. There is no payment for the first 30 days. There's no interest for the first six months. Most people, like 80% of everyone pays off the loan within the first six months. You do not have to have any previous experience. The loan is not based on credit. It's not, you. every single one of you can join the Premier Coaching Program right now. And you will, even if you do not have the money to invest in it, you can join it. And you can then, most of you will pay it off within six months from just what you'll learn from what we teach you in the coaching program. I'm trying to tell you that this is the next natural step for all of you. And if you think coaching has to be expensive, it doesn't. This is far less than what most of you guys are going to pay uh, just for buying leads. You know, it's I was like re- half a transaction. I-, I will give you an example. Yeah. So Dave Ramsey, right? Uh-huh. Dave Ramsey is now charging. Did you hear? Forty percent referral no, fees. Forty percent referral fees, and I was told, though yeah. I haven't verified this, that it's in addition to three hundred and fifty dollars a month. Mm-hmm. And it's incredible that you guys are so willing to buy business at such an extraordinary amount of money. If your Dave is, let's say Dave sends you a listing for three hundred and fifty grand, and you list the house, and remember, Dave's going to make you compete with three or four other agents, but you list the house, and let's say you have to list it at two and a half percent. Let's do a little bit. Let's just do a little bit of math because I want you guys to be really clear about this. So I'm going to say the house is 350 grand. I can't do it in my head. I should be able to, but you know, I've been doing real estate for a long time, so I've lost some IQ points. Five. You're 111 years okay, old. Okay, that's an 87.50 commission minus 40 percent, 5250 dollars on that 35 after you pay Dave Ramsey his referral fee, and let's say you're having to pay your broker a 20% referral fee, which basically knocks you- Oh my gosh, you, your net's only- No, no, it was, it was, it was basically your net's around 4,500 bucks. Yeah. So you're gonna basically pay more than half for that referral fee by the time you get paid. The insanity of doing that when you could just go out and generate your own business doing exactly what, you're t- what we're talking about. Some of you guys, you guys love to talk about 37.50, right? It's like a same as selling like a $135,000 house, which you probably would have blown off. Right, exactly. But yes, that's a really good point. So the moral of the story is if you know how to generate your own business is what we teach you in the Premier Coaching Program, you do not have to be beholden to buying leads. And those of you guys who are uh, have only been getting all your business from buying business, and it includes things like Dave Ramsey, and you're seeing all these expenses go up and you're seeing you don't even track your profit. What you pay attention to is the, are the units. Or some of you who don't do a lot of units, you'll brag about your dollar volume. I sold $20 million of the real estate 
even though it was five transactions, right? Or I sold $10 million of, trans, uh, of real estate and it was 100 transactions, low average sale price, but how much did you actually net? Nobody teaches you guys to focus on what your net is. That's the reason most of you don't net anything because everyone's teaching you how to focus on more units, more volume, but no one's teaching you how to actually run a profitable business except Julie and I. And that's the heart of what Premier Coaching is about. You did not get in this business just to churn real estate, did you? You did not get in this business just to essentially do more units and sell more volume and all the rest of it. You got in this business to improve your life and improve the life of your family. That is the, the way you do it is by realizing and accepting that the product of your business is not, it is happy customers, it is closed transactions, all those nice things that you guys like to say, but what it truly is, it's profit. And if you're not churning a lot of profit out of your real estate business, you are running a not-for-profit business, which means you might as well go get a job as a Walmart greeter uh, if they even have Walmart greeters in Walmart anymore. I have I know, no idea. Right? <laughs> I've been in a Walmart twice. At least twice. they have benefits. Okay. <laughs> right. So, so go ahead and text the word success to 47372 and join the Premier Coaching Program. Stop feeling your way around in the dark what you're supposed to be doing in the real estate business and just copy in the footsteps of all the giants that have come before you. We've coached some of the top real estate agents in the nation and still do. So stop screwing around looking for the easy button. Text the word success to 47372. Next point, Julie. Okay, so next point, commitment number two, commit to expanding your centers of influence on purpose simultaneously with contacting the existing ones. So remember the 10% rule, 10% of your database will refer business to you or do business with you personally every year, assuming that you're actually in contact with them regularly as we just prescribed. So how does that work? 10% of 100 people that you already know, already in your smartphone, already in your database, that's 10 easy deals a year, assuming you talk to them. 10% of 300 is 30. So of course it makes sense to expand your list. How big is your list right now and well, how often are you making contact? So there's a lot of micro points in which you just read. First of all, that's if you're, if you're calling them, you'll get 10% plus. Now, if you just expand your list and then you start throwing people in that aren't really centers of influence and past clients, then you're not going to get any results. No. So the way, the, what you have to do is if you have a smaller list, that's great, especially if you are a, contacting those people at the highest level like we coach you to do every single month. And what we suggest you do is you take your total list and you divide it by 30 and then those are the same people you contact every single month on the exact same day, which means most of you are going to be making five, six, seven centers of influence and past client contacts every single day. And guess what? It is okay to leave voicemails for centers of influence and past yes, clients. You should. All right. So I'm remembering that a contact is a conversation with a decision-making adult about real estate. Now, for those of you who are saying, well, good, Tim, if I'm allowed to leave voicemails, I'll just call them in the middle of the day when none of them are going to answer the phone because they're all at work. No, 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 no. <laughs> who are you cheating when you do that? You're cheating yourself. Your goal is to have your goal should be, again, take your total list divided by 30 and have at least that number of actual conversations every single day. But like I said, if you're burning the clock and you're getting your other things done and you've got seven contacts to make and three of them are voicemail, leave the voicemail, but have those four other conversations be really solid. Yeah. The goal is to actually speak with somebody. Right. And by the way, you're also not going to hire a VA to do this for you. You're not going to hire a bot. You're not going to do a, uh, you know, robo dialer. That's, you know, that, that's really the other thing is just so <laughs> asinine. I'm going to hire an, an ISA. Ugh. I'm going to hire an ISA to do all the calls. You've never learned how to do the calls yourself. You've never done the work at yourself. And you think you're going to hire some non-native English speaker to actually start calling people for you. And you can hold them accountable somehow to something you've never done yourself. That's what you think? That's how you run a successful business? You really think that's the way you're supposed to do it? Someone's lying to you and you're wanting to believe it because they're telling you that you don't have to do the real work, right? Yeah. <laughs> so I just had to point that out. All right, so there are three categories to expand your center of influence. A, this is the one most likely for them to do. You should do all three, but category A, clubs and meetups doing things that you like to do anyway. I put that first because they're more likely to do it repetitively and because, yes, that is fun, but assuming that you actually talk about real estate, it also can be very productive. So that can be sports for arts. For, uh, for me, it was music. Um, things that you like to do anyway. You know, I get people that are getting lots of leads from book clubs, from photography clubs, from just different things that maybe you have a little bit of interest in or a lot of interest in. But the point is that you're around the same people week in and week out. Orange Theory is a great example we always go to. So uh, B, business networks. So this is business network groups for the sake of networking and getting leads, like Business Network International, that's BNI. There are chapters of that in virtually every city. 
Chamber of Commerce, Architectural Review Committee, your homeowners association, entrepreneurs clubs, investor clubs, etc. These are clubs and organizations where it's absolutely 100% okay and expected to actually talk about your business and ask for referrals. So that makes sense. And then number C, charitable events and philanthropy. Part of that is so you can raise your average sale price because more wealthy people do things like that. It also gets you a lot better exposure to different things that you might not already know about. And that can be anything from art auctions to uh, just volunteering for different things and getting to know people you don't already know. Anything you want to add to that? Nope. Those are your three buckets of expansion. So your third and final well, commitment. To yes. summarize, though, do yeah. things that you like doing around people that like doing the same then things. You're in your club. You know? Yeah, and you'll, it'll be way easier. Don't try to force yourself if you've never played golf right. before to think you're going to build a centers of influence to pass client goal. I mean, you might, but you're, you get what I'm saying. It's less here. likely. Yeah. Do things that you like doing and be around other people that like doing the same thing. And if you don't like doing anything, if you're just so introverted that you've never really developed any interests, develop some damn interests. Yeah, that part is good for you. I mean, I think about how many people we've met just through French Bulldog stuff. Oh, yeah. You know, we, I get friends yeah. all over the country from French Bulldog Rescue. Mm-hmm. And then even in the neighborhood, people that maybe I wouldn't have walked up to and just introduced myself, but because Max runs up to their Frenchie or their dog. Yeah, you know? Maxie's their Frenchie. But, you so, know, what? I'll tell you the ultimate uh, expander of Center of Influence of Past kids. Clients are kids for sure. Absolutely. Commitment three, Julie. Okay. Actually attend at least two meetings or events every week. This is you doing something about today's podcast. Actually attend at least two meetings or events every week using the Ford Memory Jogger, which just tells you to talk about and ask questions based on family, occupation, recreation, and dreams. And coaching clients have a copy of that, of course, to meet new people and add them to your database. Talk about real estate. Don't be a secret agent. Be the one they already know when they're ready to transact or refer friends to you. There it is. And that's it. And the, guys, here's the main thing. You've got to do it consistently. The, con, the, the agent who just does this starts it and stops it. You're never going to get the results. If you start making these calls every single day of every single month of every single year, you will get to the point where our centers of influence and past clients will be a major spoke for you. Uh, we have had, uh, there are no exceptions to that. I could tell you guys stories until the cows come home, but the reality of it is, is that is how it always works. You will start out by, uh, if you follow the, you know, essentially build a business that's truly going to last by doing proactive lead generation. Now, what some of you will convince yourselves of, as soon as you have enough past clients and centers of influence, you can stop doing the proactive lead generation, just lean into your centers of influence and past clients. You cannot, you must always do the proactive lead generation because if you then stop doing the prospecting and just hope and pray that your centers of influence influence of past clients are going to send you enough business every year, you will find quickly that your business is going to start to fail. Your key is no matter how successful, how wealthy you become, never stop proactively lead generating, never stop prospecting. But the centers of influence and past clients, as you stay in the business longer, as you do more transactions, as you do the real work of real estate becomes the little um, sometimes very frequent gifts from the real estate gods. Yes. You get the calls, you get the emails, you get the easy, super simple business that starts coming your way, but you have to earn it. You cannot buy it. Stop trying to buy it. Stop trying to shortcut it. <laughs> and that's Julie's, my alarm for our Facebook Live session. That's right. Julie has a premier coaching Facebook <laughs> yeah. Live a session that starts in 15 minutes. So for those of you who are in the premier coaching session, our premier coaching, or not in the premier, well, those of you who are not in premier coaching, you're missing our daily semi-private uh, Facebook Live um, coaching session, Mastermind. Make sure if you're wanting to and ready to, which all of you are, join the premier coaching program, text the word SUCCESS to 47372, text the word SUCCESS to 47372. And for the rest of you who are in the premier coaching uh, session, do it, uh, attend the daily semi-private coaching call every single day. There's no question that the agents that are getting the most out of the coaching program are the ones that participate. Hey, look, it's the same damn thing. Hmm. Those of you who show up and take action and not just our premier coaching, but also in all the things we ask you to do are the ones that get the results the fastest. This is not difficult. We are not teaching you some sort of complicated formula that you have to learn how to re- uh, read hieroglyphs. This is the most simplest intuitive system that you'll ever discover in life. That's what we have created for you. It exactly really is. It. And you know what? If you guys are resisting what we presented to you today, I just want you to close your eyes and imagine some random person who's dying to live in that neighborhood, door knocking one of your past clients and doing a deal without you. Yep. That should inspire you to get your butt out the door and talk to your people. There you go. So we're going to leave the show with that for today. If you guys need to get hold of us for anything, please feel free to text us or text me rather. It's 512-758-0206. 512-758-0206. In the meantime, you guys have a fantastic day and we'll talk with you on the show tomorrow. 
This program has been a presentation by Tim and Julie Harris, Real Estate Coaching. For more information on our real estate coaching and training programs, visit our website at timandjulieharris.com. Remember to tune in weekdays at noon for upcoming shows. And until next time, thank you for listening to Real Estate Coaching Radio with Tim and Julie Harris. This podcast is a part of the C-Suite Radio Network. For more top business podcasts, visit c-suiteradio.com.